On July 23rd, an explosion occurred at the Transfiguration Cathedral in Odessa, Ukraine. This is Odessa's largest church and is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. In this video, I'm going to explore the disinformation around the explosion and try to determine the cause. Now, first, I have to start with a concept called DIP, or Deceptive Imagery Persuasion. Russian propaganda and disinformation comes in three phases. Seeding, where they spread disinformation. Harvesting, where they find what's sticky on social media. And amplification, where they use bots and sophists to identify a message. Now, when I say bot, that doesn't necessarily mean it's a computer. It's just an inauthentic account that may be run by one or more people. If you see a social media profile that only talks about the outrage flavor of the day, it's probably a bot. Sophists are authentic users that spread disinformation either intentionally or unintentionally. Now, deceptive imagery persuasion, or DIP, is a tool that's heavily used by Russia, but it comes in other forms. This is basically where you use text and deceptive imagery that sounds like it could be true, especially to people who only have surface level knowledge of the subject matter. For example, look at this Facebook post about Betty White. Can you figure out what's wrong with this post? Well, this is Betty White, but these women in black and white aren't Betty White. But we want to believe that it is. This is dip. This is deceptive imagery persuasion. How easy would it be to share that picture? Or look at these two pictures. Now, which one's correct? Did President Trump really say that Republicans are the dumbest group of voters? Or did Joe Biden really say that the average American doesn't care about their constitutional rights? Truth is, they're both false. But if you're part of a certain political persuasion, it's something that you want to believe. How fast would you share or repost one of those memes? And that's kind of the brilliance of dip. Now, the dip in the Odessa attack came in one of two forms. The first form was showing the damage and then showing shrapnel from what was implied to be a surface-to-air missile warhead. The second form of dip came in the form of showing damage to the cathedral and then showing craters with the implication that the church would be gone. Now, this particular church would be gone dip was spearheaded by a Twitter user named Shea Bose, who has been identified by Cyabra Software as a negative spreader. Uh, I can't show you everything on that screen because there's some secret sauce that Cyabra doesn't want its competitors and advertisers to know, but it's a neat tool. And uh, if you're interested in threat analysis, Veloxity is a private intelligence organization that I've done consulting for. They use the Cyabra tool to track threats for various government and private clients. So let's get back to the first form of disinformation. This was spread by a Twitter bot named Arthur Morgan. If he sounds familiar, he also accused Ukraine of harvesting organs on the battlefield, which have proved false in a previous video. The comparison picture is meant to imply that perhaps these pieces were collected from the cathedral. You show the damage, then you show the shrapnel, which implies the shrapnel was collected on site. That second picture with the, the shrapnel was from a Russian strike on August 29th, 2022, against a Ukrainian target. And this is the kind of low effort post that is typical of bot behavior because these people have to make hundreds of posts per day. And at some point you get lazy. So this is just a low effort attempt at dip since it's so easily fact checked. The second item is a little more insidious because it, it's an apples to orange comparison using hyperbole. The KH-22 has a 1,000 kilogram warhead, so we're talking over 2,000 pounds. Well, a 2,000 pound bomb is pretty darn destructive. This is a real picture of a 2,000 pound bomb. It's not gonna wipe out a cathedral like it wasn't even there. And that's kind of the point that they're trying to make. It's that the KH-22 is so destructive that there would have been more damage. So this had to have been an errant Ukrainian surface to air missile, such as a book or an S-300. In fact, Arthur Morgan even claims it was a book. But there's a few problems with this. The first is that Ukraine has been effectively out of S-300 and book missiles since around May. It's now late July. So the odds of Ukraine having any S-300 or books missiles remaining in their inventory is pretty darn low. Now, Odessa is an important target. It's where Ukraine's grain shipments are leaving the country. So it would make sense to protect with surface to air missiles. And that's the other weird thing. If you look at the dip, the words anti-aircraft missile keep popping up. And it's a weird thing to say, anti-aircraft missile. It's almost like um, 
Imagine you asked your friend if he could give you a drive to dinner, and he said, sure, we can take my automobile. Who uses the word automobile? It's, it's not 1937. In English, people don't say anti-aircraft missile. You, you say anti-aircraft gun, but when it comes to missiles in English, you say surface-to-air missile, or SAM. The term SAM even made its way into that Flight of the Intruder movie. When you shoot the Shrek, just remember not to look at it. It'll blind you. Otherwise, it's a simple deal. When the SAM's radar goes on, that's your target, you shoot. The Russian word for surface-to-air missile is this. And this directly translates to anti-aircraft missile. So I think this is what's going on. These bots are reading from a script. They see this, and when they create their posts, they directly translate it into anti-aircraft missile, even though surface-to-air missile is what it's called in the West and would make more sense to Western ears. Now, the most likely places for SAMs to be stationed here at Launch Site 1, which would protect the ports around Odessa, and then up here at Launch Site 2. Uh, both of these sites give a really good picture of the Black Sea, and that's where the threats are going to come from. Uh, one other thing, you might put a launcher here to protect the airport right here. So you wouldn't tend to put launchers behind the city over here because there, there's going to be a lot of clutter there and uh, the, the threats are coming from the east, they're coming from the ocean. And you don't need this big city in the way. It would be like a deer hunter trying to shoot through a bush. So based on this, in order for the missile to hit from uh, the east or the south, it would have to be tracking north or west. So let's take a look at the actual impact site. Now, here is the actual impact site. It happened in this, I guess you'd call it a, a vestibule. This is the likely direction of travel, and this is an unlikely direction. These spires and uh, domes up here, they, they go up like 20, 40 meters in the air. So any kind of missile coming in at a terminal trajectory would have hit one of these, um, one of these spires uh, if it was coming from the north or the west, uh, like a surface-to-air missile. Uh, would be if it was launched from this area over here. So based on the damage that we see in the cathedral, we can assume that this missile was coming from this direction here. Now, I know people love to say that uh, they've seen missiles do black flips and turn around, and that, that can happen. <clears throat> but that usually happens when the missile has been stored improperly and the fuel migrates through the plasticizer to one side. So you have more fuel on one side than the other side. I did a video about this. Uh, it can happen, but it doesn't happen very often, and it's more likely to happen to older weapon systems, mainly because they're, they're old, and they've had time to lie on their side and for the fuel to migrate through the plasticizer uh, to build up on one side. So let's run some scenarios of missile systems that Ukraine actually has in its inventory. There's the French Crotal system with a range of 13 kilometers. There's NASAMS, uh, that gives you a larger range. There is IRST, um, which gives you a, kind of a medium range right here out of 20 kilometers. And then there is Patriot. Uh, in this case, I'm just gonna use the Patriot Pack 2. That has a very, very long range. So any kind of surface air missile that would have impacted this cathedral, would have come from within these circles. That's just, that's just physics. So as we can see, firing point one down here is within all of these circles. Firing point two over here is just within the NASAMS circle. So I think it's less likely the stair missile fired by Ukraine could have hit the cathedral based on distance from this particular launch site. So if we're looking at launch sites, we're looking at launch site one or perhaps the airport. The problem with uh, a Western type missile, uh, IRST, NASAMS, or the French Crotal, is that none of the warheads on those weapon systems are over um, 22 uh, kilograms. So 
If you look at this picture of the cathedral, that is not 48 pounds of damage. That's not 22 kilograms worth of damage, right? So we're looking at a larger warhead here. So what's in Ukraine's inventory that is a larger warhead? Well, it's a Patriot. I mean, Patriot has the right range. This is the Patriot right here, this blue line. Now, there's two types of Patriot missiles that were sent to Ukraine. The first is the Pac-2. The second is Pac-3. The Pac-3 doesn't really have an explosive warhead. It, it, it kind of does, um, but it's really a kinetic kill warhead with a special terminal enhancer. Now, the Pac-2 does have a warhead, and the Pac-2 has like a 200-pound proximity warhead. I know a little bit about the Patriot system. I did a video on the system, and the problem is that the missile is designed to self-destruct if it loses track. And in order to explode, it literally needs to ask the radar station permission first. And here's part of that video. The system is directed to fire. The missile will shoot out of the launcher and the Patriot system will try to capture that missile. If it doesn't capture the missile within four seconds, the missile will self-destruct. If it does capture the missile, the system will guide the missile toward the target. Now, a couple of interesting things happen in the terminal phases of flight for the Patriot. As the missile gets close to its target, the radar system sends up an enormous amount of RF energy directed at that target. A seeker in the missile looks for this reflected energy. This is called TVM, or Track Via Missile. This sudden increase in RF energy might be the first clue the pilot has that a missile is about to hit him, but he doesn't have a lot of time to deploy any countermeasures. Now, at this point, the missile and the radar system have a vote to determine whether they're looking at the same target. If the two systems disagree, the radar will take over and tell it which target to hit. If the enemy aircraft turns on a jammer to try to confuse the missile, the missile will actually switch over into another mode called home on jam and go directly after the jammer. So if you do nothing, the Patriot kills you. If you turn on a jammer, the Patriot kills you. Pretty clever, huh? So I don't think this is a Patriot missile because the radar literally has to agree that the cathedral is a valid target. And there's a lot more safety features like self-destruct and on loss of signal and so on. The other issue is that there have only been two batteries of Patriots that were sent to Ukraine. One of those batteries we know is in Kiev. We know that. The other battery could literally be anywhere, but... <sighs> The, again, we're getting into that weird issue of the Patriot isn't going to explode in the, with the kind of damage that you would see to this cathedral. All right. So what are we left with? You know, um, the funny part that keeps coming up is that all of the Sophist posts keep saying this wasn't a KH-22. And it's almost like, like, a, like a murder suspect getting brought in by the cops and saying, murder, I don't own a gun. I've never owned a gun. I don't even know how to use a gun. And I'm here as the cop thinking, we never said the victim was shot. <laughs> so why are these guys saying KH-22 so much? I never said KH-22. I don't think anybody else said KH-22. You're saying KH-22. So <clears throat> what if this attack on the cathedral was a cruise missile, but not a KH-22. Now, I haven't seen any missile debris, uh, but some missile debris always survives. And if we look at the damage, it's pretty obvious that the missile was traveling from east to west or from south to north or somewhere in between. It came from somewhere uh, within this green arc. So this missile definitely came from the sea from this area here. Now, if this was an errant surface-to-air missile, it would have likely come from firing point one down here. But I think I've proven that Ukraine doesn't have any SAMs in their inventory that can do that kind of damage to a structure. So if we zoom out, we see a likely target over here. This target is a coal plant, and it's about 31 kilometers or 19 miles from the city. And if we draw a line from the impact site, what we get is literally a direct line that goes straight through that green arc. So it's certainly possible this missile came from this direction. Now, cruise missiles can change direction in mid-flight. Now you can fly a cruise missile up this estuary right here, but one of the issues is that all this area is flat. There's not a lot of terrain for a cruise missile to kind of get lost in clutter. Uh, this would be a SAM trap right here 
there's probably SAMs all over the place. So you don't want to necessarily use this estuary, even though it's a natural route of attack. So let's look at some of the other possibilities of how a cruise missile might approach the city. Uh, I think this is one possible path straight up through the city. Uh, you essentially come up through the Black Sea, turn right, and go straight up through the city. And, and what's nice about doing this is that uh, if your cruise missile is doing terrain matching, which is a feature of the caliber cruise missile, uh, you have lots of great terrain to match with as you're flying over the city. And you have one great piece of terrain that can tell you to turn, and that's the cathedral right here. This is a perfect piece of terrain to let you know, hey, uh, you need to turn left now to go hit the coal plant. Problem with using this approach is that it's between what are potentially two surface to air missile launch points, you know, one over uh, by the Black Sea and one over by the airport. So this might not be the best path to take if you're a missile. This would be a better path where you come up from the sea and yeah, you gotta deal with uh, this surface to air missile battery over here and you're just worrying about firing point one. So when you come in over the sea, you turn left and that'll just be a waypoint that's used with inertial guidance and you keep going unless you accidentally slam into a cathedral so here's what i think happened i think that the intended target for russia was this particular coal plant and since that cathedral was such a perfect landmark to let a missile know either to turn left or hey you're on the right course that missile was fired toward that target and the missile just failed it failed to turn or it lost control and it slammed right into that cathedral um i'm kind of leaning toward a caliber cruise missile so that's a little more in line with the damage we're seeing in the pictures I've seen Tomahawk cruise missile damage firsthand in Iraq. I took these pictures myself at one of Saddam's palaces. Uh, the Tomahawk has about a thousand pound warhead, which would be similar to a caliber. It should be like uh, two, uh, 450 uh, kilograms. So I think what we've got is a caliber missile that failed catastrophically, never made its left turn toward the power plant and the cathedral was just in the way. So let's take a look at the IDC 203 analytic standards for intelligence analysis. Uh, based on the fact that few, if any, S-300 or book missiles remain in Ukrainian service, I think that we can say an errant Soviet-era SAM is very unlikely. Based on the number of Patriot batteries in Ukraine and technical factors involved in detonation, I think a Patriot strike is very unlikely. Based on the damage and radius of the NATO provided SAM systems, I think a strike from NASAMS, uh, ISRT, or uh, Crotal is very unlikely. But based on the direction of the damage, I would consider a strike by a caliber cruise missile, a Russian caliber cruise missile, to be likely since it fits the profile of a terrain mapping missile. Uh, as always, the data that I collected, including the uh, images and um, the uh, Google uh, Earth. Uh, file are available on my Substack as a zip file for free. So if you want to look at the data yourself, feel free to do so. Just go to my Substack down here. Uh, that particular article is free. If you want to toss me $5, I would really appreciate it. This is my job now. Thank you guys for watching and be on the lookout for deceptive imagery persuasion. Mr. President? Yeah, that's me. I'm the president, man. Hey, little tugboat, did someone drop your anchor? Ah, uh, it's three o'clock in the morning, Mr. President. Oh, well, it's not like you got some girl in bed with you to wake up. Listen, you freaking nerd, I've got a problem. It's my vice principal, man. You're who? Come on, man, Camilla. Miss Harris, if you're nasty. She's got a Nerf day coming up, man. I, I gotta get her a presentation. Oh, Mr. President, I how about a Ryan Beth t-shirt from Bunker Branding? I've got Think Outside the Bomb, Live Laugh Launch for Patriot and for HIMARS, Department of the Boat People, Landmine Marker shirts, and even Hell on a Wire. A lot of these come in hoodies and stickers as well. Yeah, I'll get a Ryan Beth t-shirt from Bunker Branding. Macbeth, you saved the reputation of the tight house. Not the tight house, the, the tight house. The, the, the building, man, with the Rose Garden. Get with the program, man. Happy to help, Mr. President. And be sure to get yours at BunkerBranding.com.